Alright, hello there everyone, this is Kingdom bringing you another game from Alienware Arena's Invitational Tournament. This is a semi-final between my intent and Team Dignitas. And with me today, I've got a special guest co-casting with me. It's Bballin773. How are we doing today, man? Uh, doing alright. Pretty excited to see this matchup. Dignitas, of course, uh, one of my personal favorite teams. And I'm always a huge proponent of supporting the North American Dota scene, getting that to grow, because guess what? I live here, so, you know, I uh, want to see it do as well as possible. And it uh, should be a pretty exciting matchup, because you told me that MYI is actually a pretty solid team. Yeah, they took first place in the SIVO tournament that it concluded a little bit less than a month ago. And they've been doing pretty well also in a couple other tournaments around the NA scene. So definitely looking forward to this game and liking the picks so far. So you want to go ahead and unpause? Three, two, one, go. All right. So I do like the Jakiro and the Shatter Demon pickups. Shatter Demon, I really feel, is a strong support. And Jakiro, of course, definitely one of the top picks. And Darkseer as well, doing pretty well recently. Although I'm not so sure about letting the Bounty Hunter through. What do you think about that? Yeah, especially at the second phase. Bounty Hunter has had such a really, really high win percentage recently that it's really surprising to see him make it to the, uh, not even the first pick. And Darkseer, he can be shut down as uh, if you just sort of beat him up in the off lane, then Darkseer does need time and items. You know, Bounty Hunter, uh, no matter how hard he gets shut down, it will always contribute to a fight with that track, uh, either coming back from deficit or getting back on top. So pretty interesting. And also... Uh, Seeing the Templar Assassin Man also pretty interesting, but maybe uh, these teams will surprise us with some pretty unorthodox picks to shut down Bounty Hunter and Enigma. Yeah, I've seen, like, you know, Sven and Magnetar and Bounty Hunter have kind of had their way with the metagame past couple weeks, so maybe the solution to the problem lies in some unorthodox stuff. I don't know, you see a lot of the orthodox heroes banned out. The Bat Rider, the Magnetar, the Sven, the Luna, as well as Night Stalker, Quap. You know, cause some of those staple picks that really help a mid-game push to start snowballing and get way ahead. I'm going to see my intent go into some reserve time here, waiting for their fourth pick here. Possibly needing an offlaner, possibly needing a carry as well. No, we're going to go with clockwork. All right. Not something uh, I was expecting. <laughs> yeah, pretty unconventional, but clock pretty solid against Enigma. Battery solid does get through the Enigma. Uh, meanwhile, oh, wow, Meepo going to be the pickup for Dignitas as, uh, yeah, this is going to be a pretty interesting game as uh, Clocker can trap the Meepos, but uh, the battery salt will be spread as well. I'm just sort of trying to wrap my mind around uh, what MYI will go after this because right now they have a very solid mid-game lineup. But Meepo, Enigma, Bounty Hunter is pretty much as mid-game as it can get. So uh, I wonder how they transition to this as they pick up a sniper, pretty much the latest sniper. game hero they could pick up besides, I guess, a Spectre or a PL. Radiant Not too sure how that will work out, but... <laughs> Right, this is already going to be a really interesting game. Yeah, I, I do like Meepo. I I've considered hit picking him up in my own games. I he's got a really he's really good at what he does, which is peaking at about the 20 25 minute mark, getting level 11 and 16 before most heroes even get their level two ultimate, and just really dominating an early game. It's just it comes down to being able to lane him and get him those early levels and items. And I, I don't know. I do like the hero though. And I'm excited to see him play. I'm going to kind of look forward to seeing how, I guess, Bulba is going to be playing him. See what kind of skill build he goes with that hero. Oh, wow. Shadow Fiend. So, yeah, Dignitas is a really, really good game-oriented lineup. And also some backup late game. Enigma and Shadow Fiend definitely can make a contribution. You know, MI, they have a really curious mixture of mid to late to early. Because Clock is pretty much useless in the late game. He literally can't do anything except cog and hope to do some right-click damage. But other than that, he's pretty much garbage in the late game scenario. Uh, so, But they picked up the sniper as well. So I guess what MII is going to try to do is try to just dominate the mid-game with Clock. Just try to gank him all over the map. But I don't know. I'm not too sure how they'll lane this either. As I guess they're probably going to have to put Sniper in a top try lane and put Darkseid in an off lane. But we're going to have to see. It looks like they're going to go ahead and walk down towards the Radiant Jungle, so I I don't know, can you aggressive try lane a sniper? I guess we'll find out. At any rate, I'll go ahead and introduce the my intent players. We've got Chicken MC on the Sniper, Incarnate the Captain on the Dark Seer, Jamie D on the Shattered Demon, Lobert, who got me the replay for this match, thanks to him, is playing the Jakiro and Orbit on the Clockwork, so you want to go ahead and introduce the uh, Dignitas players then?
Sure, we got Fog, the captain, playing the Enigma. It looks like Tides is playing the Rubik. Bulba is going to be playing the uh, Meepo. Uh, Snaking is going to be playing the Bounty Hunter. And I think Aoi2000 is going to be playing the Shao Fiend. Uh, Aoi2000 staying in the mid lane for now, as I guess we might just see a Meepo mm -hmm. duel lane, uh, try to get him farm rather than as much Dark experience as possible. Uh, meanwhile, Tides venturing out very, very far away, as he might be caught in No Man's Land pretty soon. Yeah, Shadow Demon is going to go ahead and get a disruption off on him, followed up, I guess there's a lot here. Yeah, there's this Ice Path is going to hit, followed by some right-click damage, but he's juking away like a champion, getting through behind the tower. There's a surge up on the Shadow Demon, gets blocked briefly by the Sniper, but now they're in behind enemy lines in the jungle behind the tower. Clockwork Rocket is going to miss, Sniper right-clicks hitting, but so slowly doing no damage. And now he's picked up by the tower vision. Ta tower damage is going to go against the sniper and he will fall. First blood goes to the Rubik here. <laughs> wow, really nicely played by Tides of Time as uh, Sniper must be kicking himself after the uh, Shadowing got surged and he's going to pay for it with his life. So already not a good start for MYI. Uh, right now, they're going to keep two supports on the bottom lane. So I guess Sniper is going to go back to the bottom lane. Aggressive Charlie support Sniper with these kind of wards. Not really too sure what these wards are meant to accomplish as they're very close together. I mean, oh, it's going to be Bull versus Clockwork mid. Uh, Clock should have the advantage in this lane scenario. Um, but Bulba shouldn't die because Bulba, of course, a very strong player. I mean, Dark Souls bounty hard, Dark Souls should win this lane. But again, if Snaking smart, he won't die. So, pretty interesting lane compositions thus far, especially with these wards. Not really too sure how much Sniper can contribute to this lane. Except yeah, farm. I mean, it's aggressive turlings in theory are supposed to net kills and do work, put the enemy carry behind. But here we've got this sniper who, I, I mean, he he can shoot his gun and look cute and maybe get some right click last hits, but he's not going to win a tri lane against a shadow demon, um, Enigma jungle, and Rubik, who are all very good tri lane heroes. Uh, definitely not. Definitely not. Uh, so Sniper is just going to really have to focus, get his farm up. Only 2-2 two two at this point, but really very early on in the game. Uh, meanwhile, Bulba just going to try to hit level 6 as soon as possible. As you can see, Clockwork already has a slight experience of edge, but really, to really tell us, Tides of Time going to initiate with that telekinesis, but he's going to get Ice Path and surrounded. Here comes the Sniper right clicks. Shadowdeen does pick up the last hit. I would have liked to see Sniper try to get that, but still, they got the kill, and that's all that matters. And now Shaopin's going to play very defensively for the moment, but he's still going as they experience the other team. Yeah, the Charlene also, because you've got that Enigma in the jungle, you will win the experience game. As you can see, it is already going in the way of the Radiant. And that's definitely going to work out. I mean, especially once Meepo hits that level 6, gets the second Meepo, his EXP is just going to explode. Possibility of taking an early solo Roshan is going to pop up, and... It's definitely going to have an effect on this mid-game. Disruption is going to get thrown down on the Shadow Fiend, followed up by an Ice Path, but I don't think with the Creep Wave as it is, they're going to be able to make it go. Unfortunately, no, they're going to have to back off behind their tower as Shadow Fiend gets off scot-free. I mean, well, it looks like Tides of Time going to roam to mid lane. Battery's already popped, try to harass down the Meepo, but Meepo's gang position, Tides of Time, going to slow around Tides of Time. After that first flood, does have boots of speed, so he's getting very fast, faster than he innately had based on the seat of the clock. Can he kill him, though? That is a real question. As Orbit juking around, trying to do some damage, the illusion is coming back in. I don't know if he can kill. Here comes the Telekinesis, sending the Clockwork back with Telekinesis, does very low damage. Clock might just escape very, very close. Oh, he's going to escape Mewa on the bottom lane. Looks like there's going to be another engaging Soul Catcher, Dual Breath, onto the Shaofing. Will Shaofing take the fall? He might just escape out of range. Two close calls as uh, both teams breathing a sigh of relief. Very important heroes got away. Yeah, the clockwork, of course, is going to be central to the mid-game attempt of this My Intent team. And Shadow Fiend equally on the Radiant is absolutely essential. So, really, there's a lot hanging on every single lane. Bounty Hunter, of course, on the top lane for the Radiant needs to get his level 6 up and needs to be able to start ganking. And items definitely can't hurt. Meanwhile, the Darkseer against him needs to get those levels up into Vacuum, into... Ion Shell so that he can do damage in the mid game as well, make room for the sniper to have an impact in the mid to late game. Yeah, what do you think about sniper's skill build? Going for two points in headshot rather than getting that 1800 cast range shrapnel, which also can help push, it can help uh, slow people down. Instead, he's just going for the chance that he might get some more raw damage, as uh, this is probably a bit more 
of a solo sniper build, but he's in a trial lane. Not really too sure how much this build will help him in this regard, as we're going to see snaking circling around. There is a double danger, and he's going to pick it up, but yeah, I just want to know your thoughts on this sniper skill build. I'm really kind of confused about this... Yeah, I don't really know. I mean, headshot, all it does, maybe it's going to give him this a slight chance to cancel a black hole. Other than that, I really don't know what it's going to do for him. I mean, with this maybe a little bit more mid-game damage, I think the sh headshot, of course, does have more proc chance now. After the recent ch um, patch, it's got a flat 40% proc chance. We're going to see Rubik probably going down here, hitting by hit by an ice path. Sniper's going to get that last hit, so... Doing a little bit better now than he was earlier on. Already up to 18 last uh, Meanwhile, mid lane Orbit is going to take the fall. Shuriken Toss going to fly back in. Jamie D taking a lot of effort from Bulba, who is so close to level 6. This might be what Bulba needs to turn this gank back around. But that creep is going to be so loose in terms of getting that experience. Snaking going to circle back around. Here comes level 6. Bulba not leveling up his ultimate. Instead, just uh, going in. Now he's going to level up the Meepo. Here comes the net. Going to slow down the Jakiro, but Jakiro is going to escape for now but level 6 on Bulba this early on. Uh, now, we have to see what Bulba decides to do. They have Enigma, so you can't just go to the jungle and just uh, sort of farm up that way, but we'll see if he decides to be more aggressive in his ganks, as he might be going to the enemy jungle. Yeah, he might be. Looks like that is what he's going to do, and there's no wards to spot him out, so you might have a good might have a good shot of it right now. Oh, we're going to see Jakiro getting netted up. Shockwave. Oh, that's not a Shockwave. Fade Bolt. And no, he will make it out. And now here comes the Dark Seer, possibly looking to do some work, get a gank off. Uh, Ice Path is going to miss, though. And Clockwork looking to get into position, but only level 5. Doesn't have the hook. Yeah, already this is a huge advantage for <laughs> the Radiant because Clock, like you mentioned, still level 5 as the bottle, but still 0 um, 1, not really having too big of an impact. Meanwhile, Sniper, 26 CS, they're keeping them out of Shadow Fiend reasonably well, as they might be engaged in, in the river, uh, both teams circling around a Radiant Ward, so the Radiant completely aware that Shadow Demon and Jakira are there, and here because of the telekinesis throw up onto the cliff, Jamie D is in a nightmare position, no courier, no TP, gonna get tracked, we'll see how long he can live. Yeah, Jakira just has to back off, she's getting cut down, looks like Jamie D's gonna take damage, take the fall here, I really don't think there's any scenario here where he survives. <laughs> gonna try to disrupt, buy himself a little bit more time, give some annoyance to the bounty hunter. It's really all it's going to end up being. Rubik will end up getting the last hit there as well. Some nice track holds, so. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, <laughs> so much action all over the place. Clockwork, with help of Jakiro, mostly Clockwork, just got the kill. Finally hits level 6, and more importantly, keeping the Meepo down, who's already level 7. So Meepo uh, gonna delay his experience growth for a bit. Meanwhile, Jamie D gonna teleport into a mess of Eidolons on the bottom lane. Huge mistake. One sharp hit by that bounty hunter. Gonna mean the end of life of the Shadow Demon. Very, very bad teleport in by the Shadow Demon. And uh, maybe MYI is getting a bit flustered playing against a well-known team like Dignitas. Yeah, it's gotta be a little bit of a mind game, you know. It's a lot of pressure on them to do well. Just because, you know, you're playing against the pro team, so you're going to get a little bit more of an audience, but at the same time, it's going to be a lot of pressure to perform under these circumstances. Sniper's hit his six. He's got his ultimate low as well as what looks to be the start of a poor man shield. Dyer's Not really the best items. He does have his treads finished, I guess, only seven minutes in, and five CS per minute right now, so most farm on the map, except for Enigma, who's getting jungle creeps, and that doesn't count, right? <laughs> yeah, those are uh, pretty much inferior creeps, as uh, all creeps are equal, except for some creeps which are more equal than others. But here comes a circle round by Tides of Time, and that is a Radiant Sentry Ward, so it looks like Jakiro just going to get completely annihilated. Disruption going to delay the inevitable, might buy enough time to get an Ice Path. He is going to get an Ice Path, getting two heroes nicely done by the Jakiro and the Shadow Demon. Going to trade his life, but Sniper going to help pick up a kill on the Enigma. Very well worth it, but Sniper going to venture very far forward. Not too sure if it's the right move. And he's going to... Oh! Rubik stole the assassinate. Wow. As uh takes aim with that wizard staff and puts a ball right through Sniper's head. But Sniper able to live. Yeah, I actually... Re oh, no. There's a nice hook going on onto the bounty hunter. Unfortunately, he doesn't get hit by battery assault when he's invisible. He will, however, get knocked back by the cogs. Drop down to only, like, 100 health there. Unlucky. No sentry wards in the near vicinity to help out that 
valiant gank attempt coming from the clockwork. We do see Shadow Fiend rotating up to the top lane. I guess he didn't like his chances down on the bottom lane. Still doesn't have treads and only a Wraith Band to his name at this point. We're going to see a rotation around from the Enigma though, trying to catch this Darkseer. Nice body blocks coming from Fogged and that's going to spell the end of Darkseer and a kill going the way of the Shadow Fiend. Yeah, nicely done by Dignitas. 7 to 4, as uh, Sniper able to pick up some kills, probably just placeholding. Uh, actually, might just pick up a second Wraith Band. As we all, Shalfin did get a kill, or did get killed by the clock, but he's going to be hit for his life. And of course, and the kill that the Bounty Hunter gets with the track is pretty much a victory for the side of the Raiden. So uh, even though they killed the Shalfin for a clock, uh, still that track old means that any exchange going to be in favor of Dignitas, as uh, track such as the spell. But meanwhile, Rubik played a little bit too much comfort with that sniper and paid for it with his life as a uh, sniper able to outmark the tips of the Rubik apparently. Yeah, solo kill by the sniper on the Rubik. It was interesting to watch. I was watching that whole engagement and sniper <laughs> yeah, sniper started with very low health, got picked up by the Rubik fade bolt and somehow managed to come ahead with that one with only 30 health as he started walking back toward base. So very well played actually by both heroes Dyer's in that attempt there. Going to see some pushing going on in the mid lane from the Darkseer, but probably not going to be able to do too much as Meepo with Poof is going to be able to knock those creeps backward. We do see that Meepo's farm, he's doing fairly well, only a Tranquil Boots on him so far as well. No, Actually, he no, he's going to Midas. Midas. Wow. I do see that now. It's on the main Meepo, I guess. I was clicking on the wrong one. I, I don't know. I, I really know what to do with it. I'm a little bit not used to casting the Meepo games. Clockwork going to miss a hook attempt on the Rubik up on the high ground. But Rubik not going to back off. In fact, he's actually just going to pick the Jakiro up and then back off, running uphill. Got no support, so now the Radiant are going to have to back off here. I heard a Sniper ultimate. Where was that? Oh, up top lane against the Bounty Hunter. Unfortunately, Bounty Hunter is going to pick off that <laughs> Shadow Demon on the top lane by himself. Sniper not able to do enough to save Shadow Demon's life. Yeah, the movement by Dignitas has been really strong. MYI clearly uh, getting outclassed in that department as Poof going to come back in. Meepo probably picked up the hand of Midas, uh, not really for the goal, just to accelerate his experience growth. Try to hit level 11 as soon as possible and then just go for an all-out push. Really try to get that four Meepo up as soon as possible. As uh, while Shaofin does pick up the Dark Sir, it looks like there's going to be engagement for the Sniper. Can Sniper get the Assassinate off from the Snaking? It was on cooldown. Oh no, that's unfortunate. And Snaking picks up the kill. Blink Dagger picked up by Enigma, and I think MYI is starting to nice. lose a bit of their composure as the superior movement by Dignitas really coming into effect. Yeah, they really are doing a very good job of moving around the map and getting into position. This bounty hunter <laughs> actually, wow, on the bottom lane, Shadow Fiend picks off the Jakiro, and Meepo picks off the clockwork in the mid lane, so the kills going all over the map. 16, I'm sorry, 13 to 6, Dyslexia. Um, <laughs> I mean, at the moment, the and you just look at it, it's uh, reflected in the gold graph, as well as the experience graph. 7,500 experience, 7,500 gold already in the favor of the Radiant. And so just because at the same time that the Dignitas squad are getting f farm around the map, they're also picking up kills. So Dyer's doing a very good job of controlling this early to mid game, which is I guess what you expect Dyer's out of a pro team, right? Yeah, definitely. Usually it's now like just a... Uh, well, I guess it's some uh, team fight communication, gang communication, but really the biggest trademark of a pro team is just the way they move around the map. Uh, sometimes you can see the amateur teams start grouping up, really just uh, panic. Well, I know I panic so hard when I play Dota. It's just uh, insanely crazy as the blink die picked by Shalfin with that Enigma black hole and that blink in going to be really deadly to face up against. They do have a sniper, so they have the late game on their side theoretically, but the problem is can they last the late game? And that's going to be a big Dyer's issue, especially against these really, really top. strong mid-game heroes. Yeah, Bunny Hunter is going to pick off a tower, tower on the top fallen. lane, meaning all three of the Radiant, I'm sorry, of the Dire Tier 1 towers have been brought down. And one issue with the sniper farming is that if your farming hero is trying to farm without Tier 1 towers, he's going to have a very difficult time because, as you can see right now on the mini-map, Dignitas have a lot of jungle control in the Dire jungle, as well as general map control just from having more towers. Yeah, definitely. And it'll be interesting to see if Sniper puts point in the shrapnel now uh, that he is level 9. He should probably do that because they are going to start getting pushed against. Meanwhile, Meepo picks up a blink dagger of his own, so triple blink daggers up on Dignitas 
as a bounty hunter. Wouldn't be too surprised if he picked up Blink Dagger himself. Rubik, uh, gonna try to pick him, pick up one. Bounty hunter definitely won't, but that would be pretty funny. As uh, <laughs> the triple blinks and the maneuverability of all these heroes is gonna be really, really a huge factor. As it looks like Clockwork gonna take a bunch of damage. Nicely escaped from the cog, but here comes Owie. Unfortunately, beautiful chain stuns as, oh man, the after Requiem. Enough to finish off the clock arc. So Ali got his job done. The paper is his life and no track gold, I don't think. So overall, pretty good exchange for MYI. Yeah, second time that the clockwork has sacrificed himself, laid down his life in the line of duty to pick off the Shadow Fiend. It's alright. <laughs> it's all good. Works out in the end. Shadow Fiend, of course, is one of those heroes who you do have to keep down. He has gotten a blink dagger, and I mean, I don't know, you can't really stop Ali from farming. 75 creep kills in 15 minutes is pretty freaking good. But he is also sitting at two deaths already this early in the game, so definitely not what he wants to be happening. Definitely not, definitely not. As you can see, the experience graph. Goal graph doesn't really mean too much experience graph. When you're up against a Meepo, an Enigma, and 12,000 experience advantage uh, for Dignitas, it's going to be pretty difficult, but they do have very strong turtling heroes. Uh, Clock not really the best turtling hero, but with that map presence, it's going to be very useful. But here goes the blink in by Owie. One more hit and a raise. Nicely placed by Owie as he manages to clean up the kill. Constantly tread switching as uh, he is going to get that extra amount of for the raises. But still, uh, Dignitas looking very, very sharp in this game so far. Looks like Rubik's... No, Rubik... Rubik's thinking about making a solo kill on the bounty hunter. It looks like he's going to get counter-initiated on instead. Clockwork's going to get thrown out of his own cogs, and now he's like, well... This is stupid. I guess I'll just keep chasing. He does have a double damage room as well as battery, but no. Cogs get stolen, and now Tides will TP out just fine. <laughs> That's oh, no. Meanwhile, the top lane, Bounty Hunter going to pick off Sniper yet again. Ice Path going to fly back and disrupt as the Ice Path just going to tick in for like 0.5 seconds. They're going to kill off Snaking. But still, they lost to Sniper, which they definitely don't want in that exchange. Snaking gonna be pretty pleased. Uh, you know, Bulba still farming away with this Meepo. Here comes the Blinken, and Orbit gonna take a bunch of shovels right to the head as he's gonna get dented very, very hard. Bulba might take the fall. He will. Yeah, Macropire just, of course, massive damage. Vacuum very well placed by Incarnate on that. <laughs> but, well, Bulba's just rolling in gold, immediately buys back. And in the meantime, Owie picks off a Tier 2 tower on the bottom lane. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. Yeah, even when even trades are happening, the power of Shadow Fiend pushing down Enigma constantly farming up, just jungling Enigma, not even really too big of a factor in this game, as the cogs again by Tides. Uh, man, he does not want to get rid of those cogs anytime soon, apparently. Such a troll, such a troll. I think it's such a short cooldown, and even at level 1, they already last 5 seconds, and especially with the Shadow Fiends and with um, an Enigma, I think those cogs work just as well on the Radiant Squad as they do on the Dire. Yeah, definitely, definitely. As, uh, here comes the push. Do they have anything to defend it? Sniper does have one point of shrapnel that will not be enough to slow down the Pursuit Tides. Yet again, Coggy just trying to cut off the positioning. Um, as the Dire do have a Sentry Ward, or an Observer Ward, scouting out the positions. But what can they do about it? That's the important thing. As clock level 10, usually at this point at clock, uh, you really want to have like level 12 or something with the Vanguard or some sort of tanky items. Otherwise, he's just going to become very, very irrelevant very, very quickly. And you can start to see that is becoming the case for this clock player. He's doing his best. He's got. He's doing some fairly good initiation as well as some pretty spectacular hooks so far. I mean, it's just unfortunately, uh, Clockwork needs to have map control so that he can gank, and he also needs to be in a position where he has a level advantage, but right now, if you look at the level graphs, you've got your Meepo up at the top. Bounty Hunter actually keeping up with Meepo in terms of levels. Don't know how that's physically possible, but it is happening. Enigma and Shadow Fiend, and then, and then the rest of the Dire team, so levels and experience definitely going the way of the Radiant to a very large extent. Yep, you know, snaking with that Desolator and Vlad's going to town. Roshan, the Dire do not know, as apparently they did not think that there would be a Roshan attempt this early on. There might be a push from the middle tower. There is. It's still at relative high HP. Will Dignitas defend it? I think they could try, uh, as they are going to use Glyph, and Bounty Hunter is going to kill the Aegis. He's going to sell one of his items as Roshan's going to be picked off. Let's see what MI decides to do. This is really an important test on their decision making. 
it looks like they are, they kind of want to stay mid, they're grouping up a little bit on their own high ground, of course, staying on their own high ground is a much better way to in initiate, but here comes Snaking, two shots, the Shadow, fi shadow Demon, Shadow Fiend comes in in the background, but throws down his ultimate, picks off the Jakiro who falls, Enigma gets the Dark Seer, Meepo gets the Clockwork, and now it is Sniper by himself on the run from a team full of Blink Daggers. Not going to <laughs> you work. Can't really, you can't really say anything better than that. Uh, it's a complete team wipe. Dignitas looking so strong as, um, you know, MY doing the best they can, but Dignitas just getting into better positions. I think uh, MY probably waited around a little bit too long. Stinking had probably like 10 seconds to wander up from the Roche fight to get that two shot kill onto the Jakiro. And that's gonna cost them. Perhaps even a tier 3 tower, as I do not know if MY can even defend this. They're gonna try, they have to try. But Snaking, oh my god, gonna 3 shot the Jakiro this time. Disruption, gonna delay the inevitable. Snaking might trade his life, he is gonna trade his life, but guess what? He's got the Aegis. He's got an Aegis, he will end up picking off the Jakiro, and Clockwork's now like, well, I'm trapping the Cogs. Oh no, Clock's end. Cogs end, never mind. We're gonna see a Soul Catcher going down on Snaking. He is actually gonna get brought down twice, so. One thing to keep in mind is that when you're ahead, you really can't die because every single kill against you counts for twice as much because your level advantage translates into more experience for the enemy team every time you fall. However, at this point, it may not matter. Dignitas might have a little bit too much of an advantage at this point. Yeah, Dignitas going to keep up the pressure. Clock, you are next in line, buddy. Bam. Two right clicks, fade bolt telekinesis and you're done. Sit on the sidelines for 35 seconds. Oh man, snaking such a troll sitting there in biz. Oh, going to timeout mode. Here comes Bulba, the wall of replica, just melting him with a sniper. Nice defense by the Dyer as snaking is going to lose his buyback yet again. Dyer going to get another nice defense as Tide is going to take the ball as well. Here comes Ali with the BKB, going to kill one hero. Can he kill anybody else? He's trying to go for the clocker, but he might just end up paying for it with his life. He is good defense by MYI thus far as they are going to, they know their backs are up against the wall, but they are going to make it count. And they put up a really strong fight and they're still in this game. Yeah, you do always, you always have to wonder, there is always, there's always a way for a team c to come back in Dota, it's never over until the throne explodes, as um, I think I've said in a couple of the casts from this tournament already, where there have been some very, very epic comebacks in a multiple different games, so even when it's a team like Dignitas, they can apparently still lose team fights and get team wiped by teams who are behind by 25,000 experience points, so, I mean... Yeah, it can happen <laughs> as a... Uh, one thing we do have to know is that Vogt pretty much has been doing nothing this game, as uh, he farmed himself a Reaver, farming Enigma <laughs> So, uh, yeah. gonna go for that heart very soon enough. Should just sell, you know, Ogre Club, get that VIP booster, get that heart up at ASAP, as, uh, we'll see if Fog decides to join the game very, very soon. As the vacuum gonna suck in tides of time, tides of time, Gonna tell Kinesis way back, can't shout even catch up, Surge gonna fly back in, gonna steal the Surge and still going to take the fall. Purge timed after their, or before the surge, but still not enough, not fast enough to escape. Yeah, definitely. I, I do, <laughs> this uh, sniper is actually doing a fairly good job. I do like the fact that he started taking points out of where he is. I can't find him on the map. Doo -doo -doo. Sniper, cool. He's gone for a couple Wraith bands in the early game as he was not able to get a big item out quickly. He does have a Yasha. It looks like they're going to try to take this mid push again. Soulcatcher as well as Disruption on the Shadow Fiend, he's taking a lot of damage, Sniper Ultimate, no, BKB is going to save Shadow Fiend's life, Bulba comes in into the background, looks like he's going to fall though, gets on top of a Macropire and a Cog, here comes Fogged into the background, looking to be the hero, he's got a lot of tankiness with all that HP, but unfortunately it's not quite enough, he's going to fall to the Sniper, double kill up on him, and... 1400 gold now after all these kills and last hits and I mean I, I guess Sniper can get pretty scared in the late game not sure if it's going to matter though here comes Snaking with an immediate two shot of the Shatter Demon just emphasizing that this is still his game and he's still in control yeah as we're seeing the weakness of Meepo like uh, he just gets melted in these team fights but Sniper going to get pursued by Snaking never letting this guy breathe Oh man, turn around a little bit too soon as Sniper is going to escape just in time as uh, we'll see what Dignitas decide to do now that they know MY putting up a solid fight as they're getting 
they each just group up as five because none of these engagements they've been as five as uh, I think if they can do that, Dignitas can seal the deal. But still, MYI catching up in terms of experience, getting some items, Mecha up on the Darkseer. Uh, Sniper trying to make his way slowly but surely to that Manta, but still very far away. But still, experience is going to catch up. Sniper actually going for more points and stats. I don't like this. Like, I think he should just max out Shrapnel at this point. It's got the sl movement speed slow is pretty relevant. The damage at this point really isn't that great until you to, until you start pushing. Uh, Bounty Hunter is going to kill off the Dark Seer. Sniper Ultimate not going to be enough damage to finish off Tides of Time. And Jakira, you might be in a little bit of trouble. This bounty dodges the Ice Path. And now here comes a huge Blink Black Hole on top of four. Shadow Fiend Ultimate as well, just to cap things off. And that may very well be game. Yeah, an immediate buyback, but I don't know how much that will help. Mechanism going to be used. Uh, MY can still probably defend this actually Deso with the Shadow Fiend damage coming through. Just here comes the fortification. Darks are going to get netted. And he's going to explode as well. Yeah, not quite enough on him. This individual Darkseer, while he did manage to get a pretty good vacuum wall off, it's not going to be quite enough to slow down this Dignitas team. Shadow Demon, obviously, the next one to respawn is not going to be able to do so either. Rax is now down. And I think Dignitas can just rotate towards the bottom lane. Yes, they can. Lane is pushed. Tower falling already well beyond half HP, and it looks like the second Rax will fall. Jakiro Ice Path to slow stuff down, but it's not going to be enough. Too much damage coming in from Snake King, who has managed to farm a Yasha in addition to his Desolator Vlads in 25 minutes. 126 by 6 on him. He's going to get Demonic Purge as well as the Sentry Ward on top of him. Dust as well, all of the C and Viz. Looks like Clockwork will also pick off the Shadow Fiend now, though. Snake King's caught, but unfortunately, just too much right click damage coming for the Bounty Hunter. Rubik gets the last hit on the Shadow Demon. Now it looks like Orbit's going to be the next to fall. Yes, he will go down to Snake King, dominating streak on him. TP in from the Dark Seer, who just respawned, but now he's going to get the Vacuum on, on top of the Rubik. Might be able to get a kill here. He's trying. No, Vacuum gets stolen, pushed back. Sniper ultimate, no, it's going to get cancelled as Sniper falls to the Meepo in the background. Now it looks like Meepo will net up the Darkseer, might be able to get a kill on him. Yeah, poof, so much damage in a short burst of time. Rax falls to the rest of the Radiant team and double Rax now against MYI. If they had any chances of coming back into this, it is getting slimmer and slimmer. Yep, as Snakey clean up that tier 3 tower, and the bottom rack is going to take the ball as well, just waiting for the GG's to come through, because uh, this game is pretty much all but over, as uh, still, MY trying to probably compose themselves going to the next match, trying to think of where they went wrong. I think where they went wrong is that they just let Snakey get Bounty Hunter, that's pretty much where they went wrong. Yeah, that Bounty Hunter, of course, such a strong hero. It looks like, uh, yeah, Meepo will go down. Bulba just not having too much fun this game. 9 and 5, I don't know, maybe 9 and 5 is not that bad. <laughs> Bounty Hunter, of course, picking off the clockwork as well as the Jikiro, just for uh, kicks and giggles here at the end of the game. GG, well played, called, and I'm going to go ahead and go into the next game. So, like you said, I think the Bounty Hunter probably paid one of the biggest roles, as well as just some very good map movement through the early game, and a huge experience lead, taking Dignitas from a small lead at the beginning to a snowballed huge lead that we saw up through a 26 minute throne, so very strong game played by them, as to be expected, and some very heroic defense attempts made by MYI as well, so definitely a fun game, wouldn't you agree? <laughs> yeah, interesting, as uh, when Bounty Hunter dies three times, I think he bought back for all three of those deaths, still managed to get 804 GPM. Uh, you know, it's not going to be a ga good game for you, as uh, Snaking's... He didn't, didn't even get that many CS. Well, he got 135, but just farmed heroes like nobody's business, and that's a power bounty hunter, so I fully expect MYI, since they don't have the first pick, they're going to bear a bounty hunter this game. Alright, so thanks for watching, guys. This is, like I said, this was the semi-final game one from... Alienware Arena's Invitational Tournament. I'm going to put this one up onto my channel, and Game 2 will be on Bball and 77's 3 channel. You can find that at youtube.com slash bball and 773. So, thanks for watching. You guys have you have any last words, Bball, to throw out there? No, hopefully we'll see some more good picks, and hopefully MYI can get it to a Game number 3, and hopefully regroup themselves after a pretty convincing win by Dignitas. 
All right. Yeah. Again, thanks for watching, guys. Follow, subscribe, check out B Ballin's channel, and thanks for watching. This is Kingdom signing out. GG's, guys.